Okay, so I'm going to make sure that you open up paint.net. I'm going to go and open up somebody's work. Um, while you're listening to this, I may pause it a few times so that you know what I'm doing. I will let you know that I'm going to pause. I'm going to pause right now so I can go and open a piece of work and I'll resume in a second. Okay, so I'm resumed and you can see that I've gone to open here or I could just go to file and open. I'll make sure that I go to the repeating patterns folder. We all should know how to get there. I'm going to go and choose somebody's photo and what will happen is this will go into the background into the background layer that I'm pointing at right here. So I'm going to go and open up someone from Miss Lou Falani's. Now the view you'll get will look like this. Instead I'm going to go to my view menu over here and go to thumbnails so I can see people's faces. It makes it much easier to find there. So I'm going to use Magdalena's. I'm going to double click on Magdalena and I'll open up in here so you can see that the background has disappeared now and I've got a picture of Magdalena. And the first thing I'm going to do is add a new layer so I need a piece of plastic if you like over the top of the background. Add new layer. What I'm going to do next is, this is very very important, is instead of calling it layer 2 I'm going to double click and I'm going to give it a name. So this is going to be hair. Very simple. I'm going to click OK. Now then some children have already done this but I'm just repeating this so we have the whole of the year 4 up to speed. Instead of using the pencil tool we're going to use the line tool and there's a good reason why we're going to use the line tool. The line tool makes if I just turn this off, the line tool makes a line that looks like this and I can zoom in on, the, on here and you can see there are lines and squares on the line and I can move the line around once I've drawn it and it'll get longer and longer depending on how I manipulate it. If I use the pencil tool over here the pencil tool makes a very jagged line and you can see all the pixels and what happens is if I go and change this if I go and change these lines and make them bigger or smaller these squares will break up and it means that when I come to use the flood fill all the paint will go through the gaps let's make this square there we go alright if I use the flood fill on this line it won't okay so I'm going to go and undo all that and make sure that I've got my background on there we go right so I'm going to go around the hair. So I'll just have a look at the, at the shape of the hair first. I'm going to get my line tool. And it doesn't matter where I drag the line to, because I can bend it to the shape of Magdalena's hair here. Like that. Okay. Another important thing is to draw to the squares. Okay, don't draw from the square because you'll pick it up and you'll get you'll make the, the other line longer. Instead, I'm going to draw two the line there and I'm going to follow the shape of Magdalena's hair. Now I know that she's got some glasses in the way there and I can't work out exactly where the hair goes. So instead I'm going to go around here and bend it around. I'm going to pause the video now and I'm going to do the hair. I might even have another face here for us to use next. Okay, because I'm going to show us next how to flood fill and what's going to happen when we do flood fill. So I'm going to just pause the video now. Okay, so we're back. You can see I've got Jimmy's face again that we use in class. And you can see I've got Magdalena's over here. I've got another piece of work open. So I'm going to go and click on this and exit because I don't need these. Don't save that. And you can see that this is the piece of work that we did before the pause. And if I go to Jimmy's, you can see in my tracing paper here, if I can double click on that, I should really call it hair. Okay, I can turn the background off because I'm not drawing in the background. I should never be drawing in the background. And when I'm drawing, I should be drawing an, in the layer that I want to be drawing in. So I want to be drawing the hair in the hair layer. If I draw in the background layer, it means that I can't change. I can't change my mistakes. So if I start drawing sort of Jimmy's eyes, I'm going to 
circle to an ellipse and I want it to go in there. I need it to be a filled shape. So I'm going to go and draw Jimmy's eyes. And I've drawn it in the background, so my background is blue. I haven't drawn it in the hair layer, or I haven't made a new layer called eyes. Okay, so I need to undo this. I'm going to undo that. What we're going to do now is we're going to make a new layer. I'm going to call this eyes. I'm going to call this eyes. Very simple. No prizes for guessing what we're going to draw. Now, in the OP style, what we need to do is just ignore ignore the colour of the eye completely and just draw a circle. So we need to go and change our, bu our brush, as I did a moment ago, and make sure it's a filled shape. If it's just the outline, you're just going to get a, cir a circle with nothing filled in it. So go and choose the circle tool, the ellipse tool. You can just press O on the keyboard if you want. And we can choose black. You can choose dark brown if you want. I don't really mind. Or blue, if that's what you, that's what you really want. And I'm just going to draw a very simple circle like that. Really easy. You can see in my layer I've got two eyes here. Let me turn that off and see what it looks like. Okay. And when I turn them off, I've got whites. I've got sort of reflections and in the eye itself. I'm going to put those on as well. Use a brush tool, some white. Make sure I'm in the right layer. Here we go. So what I want to do now is I'm going to pause the video because we're going to continue with the eyes and I'm going to use the line tool to go around Jimmy's eyes. So I'm just going to pause it right now. Okay, so I've just resumed the video. What I've done is I've just used the line tool to go around the very bottom of Jimmy's eyelid. Now, originally it was white because that was the last colour I used in the reflection of the eye. While I've got the, the line highlighted like this and I've got squares, I can change the colour and I can also change the width of the pen that's going to suit my cartoon, my cartoon style. You can see I've used quite a thick black line here for his hair. I don't really want that thick a black line for his eyes. And I can copy this and I can paste it. I need to go and copy this. I'll just pause the video and allow me to copy this. Okay, resumed. It wasn't allowing me to, cop to copy, the, copy the line but that doesn't matter. We can just draw it freehand. And now I've done... It doesn't have to be absolutely perfect, just as long as it touches the colour part of the eye. It should be okay. Let me do the next one. Now the shape of the eye is very important because this is what gives the this is what actually gives the feature of somebody's face and actually how you can work out who it is. Okay, if I just turn off the background, you can actually see the eyes are pretty much there. Okay, you can actually see that is the shape of Jimmy's eye. So I'm going to pause it again, and you'll have the other one done, and then we're going to go to the eyebrows. And we're back. You can see that I've turned off the background, so we can see the shape of Jimmy's eyes. What I forgot to mention was the colouring in of the hair. You can see that I've joined all the, all the lines up in the, the hair, so in these eyebrows, as I draw them, I draw around the shape of the eyebrows. I'm just going to do a very, very quick one here, like this, and then I'm going to draw the top of it. I want you to think about the actual fill tool and how we fill in, how we actually fill in uh, with colour. Now then, we should already know about this, but if we use the bucket tool, the paint tool, and I go and use dark brown. Choose brown. I'll go to my background and choose the colour. And I go into my eyebrows again. If I go and fill in here, you know that the paint is going to go out and cover the, the entire background like that. Okay, we don't want that. So this is what this is the, 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 the steps you have gone through with the hair. You need to do exactly the same with the eyebrows. Okay. So you need to make sure there's no gaps, so I'm going to go and turn the back the 
background on. And I can go and rub this out. Yeah, rub it up nice and large. And even you don't have to do each individual hair like we have into up here. Just do that. Just do the outside. Just do the outline. I need to go and turn this down. see I've kept the, the shape of the eye the eyebrow as well the underside of the eyebrow is very important because that also highlights the shape of the eye and then I'm going to do the top I'm just going to pause this and make sure I've done both of them okay so I've resumed the video again you can see that with the eyebrows even with the shape there it's starting to make Jimmy look a little a little odd but if I just turn the background off and turn the photo off you can actually see that we're starting to get something that resembles Jimmy's face. So I'm going to turn that back on. I'm going to fill these in and your extension could be to do the nostrils. You only have to do the nostrils. Okay, just the shape here and the shape here and this underside and you'll start to get the shape of the face. The next stage after that is to do the lips. Be the lips only has to be this pit here and this dark line there because that will automatically give us the shape of the mouth. Finally, you can do the shape of the face, the cheeks and the chin. And then if you have time, you can do the ears as well. And that'll be it for today. Good luck.